طاہر ام بن نفس ہی و متحر ام بغیر ہی اٹ از پیوریفائنگ بائی اٹ سیلف اینڈ پیوریفائز ادرس دس طہور اینڈ دس واٹر کین بی یوز فار ودو غسل اینڈ آر کائنڈ آف پیوریفیکیشن نمبر ٹو طاہر وچ از پیور بائی اٹ سیلف بٹ اٹ کان پیوریفائی ادرس وی کان پیوریفائی آور سیلف وی کان یوز اٹ فار واشنگ اور کلیننگ اینی تھنگ سو دس طاہر سو یو شو انڈرسٹینڈ بٹوین اے مائنیوٹ ڈفرینس بٹوین طہور اینڈ طاہر اینڈ تھرڈ کیٹیگری دیٹ کمس دیٹ از نجس وچ از نجس وچ از غیر طاہر ام بی نفس ہی و غیر متحر ام بغیر ہی وچ از امپیور بائی اٹ سیلف اینڈ آلسو امپیور دیٹ اٹ کانٹ پیوریفائی ادرس سو دس آر دا تھری ڈفرینسز اینڈ وی وانٹ وینٹ آن ٹو دا حدیث ان دا فسٹ حدیث انڈر دی باب دی بک آف پیوریفیکیشن کتاب و تہارا اینڈ وی ڈسکسڈ اباؤٹ دی حدیث آف رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اباؤٹ دی سی واٹر اباؤٹ دی سی واٹر وچ از پیور اینڈ وچ کین بی یوٹیلائزڈ فار ڈرنکنگ وچ کین بی یوٹیلائز فار پیوریفائنگ ٹو میک ودو اینڈ گسل اینڈ آلسو وی ڈسکس دیٹ آل دی میتھا میتھا دی حدیث دی ورڈ میتھا یوز یوزڈ ان دس حدیث وچ آر فار دوز تھنگس وچ آر لائف اینڈ ڈیڈ ان دا اوشن لائف اینڈ اینڈ ڈیڈ ان دا اوشن سو اٹ از حلال اٹ از حلال ایکسیپٹ فار دوز تھنگس وچ آر پوائزنس وچ آر poisonous so you need to keep this in the mind inshallah and we mentioned that particular point that among the muslim community uh, uh, some of the uh, people they believe that there are some animals some uh, creatures which are in the ocean like prawns like crabs like eels and things like that which are makru which are makru according to the madhab hanafiya but the umuman the ulama they say that it is halal it is halal it is halal as long as that particular thing what is there in the ocean is not poisonous is not poisonous so here the sahaba radiyallahu anhum they went to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asking ya rasulullah before they did this amal before they did this they want to travel in the ocean before that they went to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the what is the faida what we understand from this is that before you have any masala in your mind any specific masala in your mind before getting into that masala you need to go to the scholar an alim and you need to find about those things you need to find about that masala and clarify that masala so that you will not fall into any wrong thing so it's all about this is all about an adab and manners that you seek and we learn from this hadith inshallah okay so this are briefly we discussed about in the last class inshallah we will go on to the hadith number 2 so in this chapters uh, we are we are dealing with the hadith you know for example it starts with kitab utahara hadith number 1 2 3 4 and it goes to the end of the kitab around 2000 2000 hadith with the same order so it will be easy for you to remember the number of the hadith the number of the hadith so last class we discussed about the number 1 hadith number 1 now we will go on to the hadith number 2 inshallah and here i am going to uh, recite i am going to explain you Uh, keeping three hadiths in the minds at once i am going to recite three hadiths and after that insha allah we are going to remove or istakhraj we are going to extract some of the benefits of this hadith because these three hadiths are interconnected with each other interconnected with each other now insha allah we'll go on to the hadith number 2 in kitab at-tahara bab al-miyah عن ابي سعيد الخضري رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ان الماء طهور لا ينجسه شيء اخرجه ثلاثه وصححه احمد حديث نمبر 2 what is the meaning of this hadith rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the water is purifying and nothing can impure it nothing can impure it number 1 hadith number 1 number 2 وعن ابي امامه الباهلي رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ان الماء لا ينجسه بشيء الا ما غلب على ريحه وطعمه ولونه اخرجه ابن ماجه وضعفه ابو حاتم وللبيحقي الماء طهور الا ان تغير ريحه او طعمه او لونه بنجاسه تحدث في now going on to the number 3 hadith but in the book it is number 4 in the book it is number 
وعن, uh, what is the meaning of this hadith of number two hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the water is not cannot be impure except some of the properties changes what are the properties Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions that illa ghalaba ala rihihi if the smell changes smell of the water changes aw ta'mihi or the taste changes aw launihi or the color changes if these three properties of the water changes then it will become impure not necessarily that all the properties should be in in that any of these properties whether it is color whether it is smell whether it is taste changes the water will become impure will become impure and i'm going to explain you inshallah what makes the water impure and how are we going to understand whether this water is impure or not inshallah okay going on to the next hadith with this inshallah you will be able to understand the uh, the specific meaning of it and the general meaning of the waters this is little uh, dry okay this this subject is little dry inshallah overall we, when we go on with the few ahadis then you will be able to understand and the, this this this, this fiqh is very interesting inshallah very interesting so but we, before we get into purification we need to understand uh, the different kinds of water what can be utilized for purification okay going on to the hadith number 4 wa an abdullah bin amr radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha kana al ma'u kullatayn lam yuhmil lam yahmil al khabath wa fi lafzin lam yanjus akhrajahu al arba'atu wa sahahu ibn khuzaimah wa ibn hibban wal hakim here Ibn Amr radiyallahu an he narrates this hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that إِذَا كَانَ الْمَاءُ كُلَّتَيْنِ لَمْ يَحْمِلِ الْخَبَثِ If the water reaches to kulla kulla means it's a part which is considered in one of the villages near the Medina which is known as Qilal uh, a part a part you know parts right the container water container uh, probably the ulama they say that this container contain, consists of around uh, two kulaitin, two parts, around 500 liters. How many? 500 liters. Some of them they say it's around uh, nearly 450. Some of them they say it's 560. It goes to nearly 600. But what is what we keep in general my, in, in, in mind generally is that it is around 550 to between 550 and 600 liters of water. If the water is of 600 liters and if there is any impurity falls into that, the water will not become najis. The water will not become impure. This is what the hadith says. This is what the hadith says. Now we discussed three hadiths, isn't it? We discussed three hadith. What is the first hadith? Mutlaq, which is general. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the water cannot be impure. Hadith number two says the water will become impure as long as uh, the water will become impure if its properties changes. What are the properties? Smell, smell, taste, and color. Now this hadith says that the third hadith says if the water is in good amount, if it is more than 500 liters, if the impurity falls into that, impurity, impurity falls into that, it does not become impure. It does not become impure. Now you understand the difference of uh, different hadiths. The ulama rahimahumullah, they say, keeping all these three hadiths in the mind, they say that if the impure falls into the water, if it is less than the kullatain, if, the, if it is less than 550 liters, one of the opinion of the ulama are that, is that the water will become impure. The water will become impure. Even if the water does not change its color, taste or smell. You keep this in the mind. Another set of the ulama, they say that the water will not become the water will not become impure even if it is less or more, as long as the properties does not change. As long as the properties does not change. The moment the property changes, whether it is more or less, less than the kullatain or more than the kullatain. As long as the property does not change, and this is the opinion of Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, Imam Malik, Imam al Dhahabi, and most of the scholars. You keep this in the mind. One of the opinion they say that less than kulatain, impurity falls, even if the properties does not change, it is impure, and you can't use this water for purification. Sec second opinion is that whether it is less than two kulatain or more than that, 
as long as the color does not change, uh, uh, the taste does not change, and the smell does not change, the water is still remains pure. Remains pure. Now we are talking about those things which falls into the water are impure stuff. What are the impure stuff? For example, uh, you know the defecation. If a human being defecate into the water or urinate into the water, the water will become najis. Alis kadalik, the water will become najis. There are certain things which falls into the water. For example, cow dung, or cow urine, or camel urine, or the goat's urine, or any things which are pure. These are all pure. We, we most of the people do not know that the urine of the cow. They say it's impure. It's not impure. It's pure. It's not najis. So if there is pure impure impurity of those animals that we eat, those animals that we eat, it's saliva, it's urine, it's dung is pure. It's pure. And those animals which we do not eat, which we do not eat, the saliva of it, the urine of it, the dung of it is impure. Is it clear now? What are those animals that we eat? Do we eat dog? Do we eat pig? Do we eat lion? Do we eat those animals which are haram for us? No. So, as this saliva, all this is impure. Any of these kind of nudges or even the nudges of a human being falls into the water, the water will become impure. The water will become impure. So, this is the opinion, inshallah. Keeping these three things in the mind. So, what is, what is the main point that we are discussing here is that color, smell and taste. You must have experienced this. Sometimes, you know, when you make wudu, sometimes you will find a full order of this a uh, what uh, smell of the water or taste of the water so you should not continue doing wudu with that or you should not continue doing ghusl with that rather what you have to do you have to bring another water and make wudu or ghusl from it so that purifies you so now we understand subhanallah see how minute our deen is and how easy our deen is it is very clear in our religion you know what to use what not to use subhanallah is it clear now we'll go on to the next hadith inshallah Taib. Hadith number 5. So we are, uh, see, uh, if you can buy this book, Bulug al-Maram min Adillat al-Hikam, it's available in any of the uh, bookstores, any of the Islamic bookstores, inshallah, you can buy from it, from there, and you can utilize and make notes on the book itself. Make notes on the book itself. So you won't lose the pages, and you'll have notes. For example, if you see my book, you'll have uh, notes here. If you see my books here, these are the books which we studied, so you'll find notes which are written on the book itself. So what you what what happens is when you are reciting or reciting or reading the uh, reading, reading those hadith, you will have those benefits which are extracted and written on the book itself. So you will not lose it. So this is one of the ways of uh, you know that you uh, learn and uh, record all the things for why that you have learned from the uh, kitab, inshallah. So is it clear now? The water, as long as the color, taste, and smell does not change, the water will become is pure inshallah and it is used it is for used for uh, purification going on to the hadith number 5 wa an abi hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la yaghsilu ahadukum fi al-ma'i al-da'im wa huwa junub akhrajahu muslim wa lil bukhari wa la yabulanna ahadukum fi al-ma'i al-da'im alladhi la yajri thumma yaghtasil fi وَلِمُسْلِمٍ مِنْ مِنْ لَفْتِهِ مِنْهُ وَلِأَبِي دَاوُدَ وَلَا يَكْتَسِلْ فِيهِ مِنْ مِنَ الْجَنَابَةِ Very important hadith. This particular hadith talks about the manners of a Muslim. Talks about the etiquettes. Talks about the adab. What are the manners and adab here? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says لَا يَكْتَسِلْ أَحَدَكُمْ فِي الْمَاءِ الدَّامِ وَهُوَ جُنُبْ Nobody should Nobody should wash themselves in a water that is stagnant water, which is stagnant. What is stagnant water? The water does not move anywhere. For example, ponds, wells, and uh, huh? bucket water. That's a good point. Bucket water. So we have tanks on the top. So we have tanks in, in, at homes. So it's all stagnant water. It's not moving. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam specifically mentions here that لَا يَكْتَسِلِ أَحَدُكُمْ فِي مَا إِدَّائِمْ وَهُوَ جُنُبْ وَهُوَ جُنُبْ When he is in the state of impurity. What is junub? Janaba. What is janaba? Sexual impurity. What is sexual impurity? It is 
a thing that occurs when a husband and wife meets each other when they have a sexual intercourse when they have sexual intercourse and during this process many substances that comes from the human body many substances comes from the human body so some of the substances are considered as najis for example madi of male and female is considered as najis but the money the sperm the ejaculation of the female in the male ejaculation it is not najis it is not najis it is pure it is pure but yet why rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam prohibited us from washing ourselves from the stagnant water is because of not it is najis because it is from the adab from the adab for example uh, there is a pot there is a bucket of water the human saliva the human saliva is it najis or is it impure or pure it's pure so i am going to spit spit into the bucket of water and uh, somebody else sees that and i have spat into the water will you make wudu from it you dislike it right you dislike it isn't it you will not say oh it's impure i'll go and make wudu from it so you dislike it similarly a, j- a person who is in the state of janaba going and going and washing himself taking ghusl himself in the water and why because that particular water is used by many other people during the olden times even now if you go to some of the african countries or some of the countries like mali mauritania you will find there are no facilities like you know like how we have water tanks and how we have electricity and things like that. they don't have anything they use water from rain water that is been collected in a place and they use and they drink and they utilize for for uh, purification so they if somebody goes janaba and purify himself from that and other people probably would dislike it so they don't like to utilize that water isn't it so here that's that's what the adab is subhanallah look at the religion of islam how beautiful it is i'm asking you which religion talks about this which religion teaches such a minute things if you read fuk of our religion it increases the iman look at the minute things which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and our rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam made very clear for us so that we can take benefit out of this we are an example khairu umma we are an example because of this we purify ourselves allah says in the quran inna allah yuhibbu at-tawwabina wa yuhibbu al-mutatahhirin and allah likes who makes tauba to allah and who purify themselves and this purification is as i told you purification of spiritually and purification in order to any of your ibadah to be accepted by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't it طيب the hadith continues with a lot of things in one single hadith see uh, the, the 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 beauty beauty of this book is ibn ibn hajar rahimahullah he brings out the hadith and in one hadith he brings out the alfaz of different hadith which are related to the same topic and he keeps into that he keeps into that and he explains this here he says do not wash yourselves in, when you are in the state of janaba next says next the wording says la yabulanna ahadukum fil ma'i daim alladhi la yajri thumma yaktasil fi subhanallah i wonder rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that do not urinate into the water which is stagnant water do not urinate do not defecate into the stagnant water for example you go to swimming pool sometime what do you do you might urinate inside then this happens most of us smiling here <laughs> huh? this happens people urinate inside that they don't want to come out <laughs> they urinate <laughs> subhanallah this happens with many people and i've many people came to me and said yeah sheikh you know i i urinate in the water what should i do is it it's prohibited for you to urinate and you can't urinate into the pond you can't you can't urinate into the well why because people are going to utilize that water for what for purification for drinking isn't it for purification for drinking subhanallah look at the teachings of islam do not urinate or defecate into the water okay you urinate and defecating now we discussed about the hadith previously that if the water is more than kullatain if impurity falls into it, into that it does not become impure isn't it and this particular hadith and the other other hadiths which are related here is related with with an incident that happened during time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in madina there was a well called al buda'a what is it al buda'a 
so this particular well a huge well whenever there is rain whenever there is rain the human feces the human feces that flows along with the rain water into the well sometimes people throw the najasa for example the uh, menstrual blood which they use with the cloth they use they throw into that well sometimes what happens they the, the dogs the flesh of a dog and things like that they falls into that well falls into that well so what happens the water will become najis as per the hadith but rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sahaba radiyallahu anhum they say they saw rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam making wudu from that well making wudu from that well so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ir sahaba they went to rasul asked ya rasulullah there is a lot of dirt in this water there is a lot of dirt in this water and lot of feces falls lot of blood falls into that lot of animals fall into that dead animals so what will become najis and ya rasulullah you are making uh, wudu out of it that's when rasulullah sallam said innal ma'a tahurun la yunajjisuhu shay verily the water is purifying and it it is not it cannot be impure it cannot be impure nothing can make it impure but the other hadith supports that anything that changes the color taste and smell will change now we can understand the hadith now somebody why i am telling this because somebody urinates into the water a huge pond does it make any difference does it make any difference you will not even know there is you know urinated water in that okay somebody defecates into the water a huge amount of water it mixes with the water it does not change the color what change the taste or anything so it does it make any, does it make any difference so how how we will come to know what we understand from this hadith is that this is from the adab this is from the adab somebody might not be knowing that you have urinated but allah knows that you have urinated there somebody might not be knowing that you have defecated in the water but allah knows that you have defecated and spoiled the water so this is all you know those adab etiquettes that you have to follow when it comes to protect the honor of another muslim even when they use the things which are utilized by the uh, by the uh, by the people this is something known as masliha al ama general principle for the benefit of the people isn't it subhanallah the hadith next the hadith which says about ur- uh, urination the hadith pre- previously it talks about do not wash yourself from janaba so urination is much worse than washing yourself from from janaba subhanallah now here in this hadith la yabul wal al muslimi minhu in the previous word wordings it is mentioned fihi what is the difference between fihi and what is the difference between minhu what is the difference uh in it and from it there is a difference between both now for example a person in the state of janaba okay he goes to a well he goes to a pond he goes to purify himself now what has been prohibited is to dip himself into the water so it will become dislikable for the other people to utilize now can he use that water for purification that is the word called minhu now i am standing at the at, at the pond standing at the pond and i am taking that water minhu fi he is purifying the inside inside purifying myself inside now i am purifying with the water taking from it minhu look at the wording subhanallah so that's why i i ask you to learn arabic language so when you lo- study the hadith you will understand okay what exactly fi he minhu ala ala fi you understand all these things you understand the meaning of it is it clear so minhu can you take that water so here uh taking the water from the well or a pond or whatever stagnant water it can be utilized for purification how beautiful subhanallah how minute subhanallah our religion is talks you know allah subhanahu wa taala made things easy for us he has made this religion easy for us yuridu allah bikum al yusr wa la yuridu bikum al usr allah wants easy for you allah does not want difficulty for you but it is you and me who made this religion difficult upon ourselves and believe me if you make this religion difficult upon yourself allah will make difficult things upon you and we have an example bani israil what they did they made things difficult upon themselves isn't it difficult upon themselves then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made difficult upon them for example we do we know the story of 
in surah al-baqarah we know the story of the bakar the cow and the companions of musa alayhi salam when he said about the cow they asked what color it should be what height it should be what how it should be so what allah made difficult the, the more they ask questions allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made things difficult for them so in islam asking questions unnecessarily and going into those matters unnecessarily what makes it will cut away your religion it will cut away your religion for example we have in the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam a person went to rasul ya rasulullah is hajj obligatory upon us listen yes this year and he asked what about next year rasulullah rasul kept silent he keep on asking ya rasul next year next year rasul kept silent what if he would have said yes it would have, it would have become obligatory upon every one of us to perform hajj every year isn't it so it is from the adab that you know asking unnecessary questions which are not related to the deen or getting into those matters which are not uh, concerning you because this will protect you your honor in this religion inshallah so this this is the fawaid that we learn inshallah now talking about this wala yaktasil fihi min janaba now we understand washing yourself from the stagnant water in the state of janaba or urinating in it or defecating from it is prohibited for us it is prohibited for us but what is allowed is utilizing that water for cleansing yourself any doubts inshallah is it clear uh, is this very tough or dry is it interesting i am telling you believe me wallahi alazim the more we go into the next few ahadith it is going to become more and more interesting inshallah it's more and more interesting you will love sitting here inshallah because fiqh is so interesting fiqh is very interesting you will love things because these are the things that we do every day these are the daily activities purifying yourself everything is daily activities isn't it so you need to know and believe me you teach these things to your children to your family to your wives and to your uh, sisters and brothers and parents and they them cousins and they teach others subhanallah until your mulk qiyamah look at the reward that you get look at the reward that you get it's an ongoing process allah has made this reach as a mercy for us for ongoing process as Uh, you know as a reward for us even we are in the grave we will be record, uh, rewarded for that inshallah now we will go on to the hadith number 6 hadith number 6 wa an rajulin sahiba an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam naha rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an taktis al-mar'atu bi fadli rajul aw ar-rajul bi fadli al-mar'ah wal yaqtarifa jami'a akhrajahu abu dawud wa an-nasai isnadu sahih and i would like to recite the next hadith also because it is both the hadith are interconnected with each other hadith number 7 wa an ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma anna an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yaktasilu kana yaktasil bi fadli maymunata radiyallahu ta'ala anha akhrajahu muslim wa li ashab sunan iktasala ba'du azwaj an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi al-jafna فجاء النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ليغتسل منها فقالت له اني كنت جنبا فقال ان الماء لا يجنب ان الماء لا يجنب وصححه الترمذي وابن وابن خزيمه this two hadith talks about the first hadith talks about rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and this hadith is narrated by a sahabi who is unknown who is unknown it is mentioned wa an rajulin sahiba nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the name of the sahaba is not mentioned in the hadith so this particular hadith will become majhul what is majhul unknown so when you study mustalah al hadith the science of hadith you will understand what is majhul so majhul is this where the sahabi the name of the sahabi is missing which is unknown who it is we do not know but are we going to take this hadith or not consensus of the ulama is that yes we will accept this hadith as a ruling even though it is majhul because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with sahaba radiyallahu anhum and sahaba are pleased with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala radiyallahu anhum wa radu an and who is the sahabi can anybody define who is sahabi yes can you define who is sahabi and who is not sahabi the one who accompanied rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yes in the state of iman very good who said that 
perfectly. And he who died in that, the one who even saw Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, not only it is not necessarily that he has accompanied all the time, he has seen Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he brought iman while seeing him. Okay, and he died upon the iman. This is the definition of Sahabi. This is the definition of Sahabi. So here the Sahabi is majhul, and we can take the ruling. We can take the ruling. And what is the meaning of this? You need to hear. And this particular ruling applies upon upon those who are married, and also those who are not married even. For example, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that an Allah taktisil. And taktisil al marwa to be fadli rajuli bil fadli. The water which is left over by a woman, by a wife, cannot be utilized for utilized by a man. By vice versa, the water which is utilized by a man cannot be utilized by a woman because they were in the state of janaba. Where when they were in the state of janaba, for example, there is a bucket of water. A wife and husband they went. First wife washed herself from the water, and the water, some of the water is left out in the bucket. Now the husband comes, the man comes, he utilizes water for purification. This hadith says, vice versa, it is not allowed. It is not allowed. Why? Why it is not allowed? Because they were in the state of janaba. This, this is what the hadith says. But what is allowed is wal yaktarifa jamia, but take scoop of water. Both of them together. For example, it is allowed. What we understand from this hadith is that it is allowed for a husband and wife to wash themselves at once. In the same washroom, you go both of them, wash yourselves. You can look at your aura, at your private parts. Islam does not stop. Many Muslims came to me ask, asking, uh, can a, can a husband look uh, can a husband look at the aura of uh, his wife? Can a wife look at the aura of a man? Yes, of course, it is halal. But you can't look at the aura of another man. But you can't look at the aura of another woman. But it's allowed for husband and wife. So this is a fawaid that we understand. And not only that, you can even take bath together. And we know many hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that Aisha radiyallahu anha and some of the uh, azwaj nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam they used to take bath together. Subhanallah. There's nothing wrong in this, and there's nothing to feel shy or there's nothing to feel bad about this. Islamic religion, Subhanallah, it's very good. And a person who feels shy to ask the masail about tahar and about purification, about hayd and menses and things like that to a scholar, anybody, they should not feel shy because feeling shy is will harm you. Feeling shy will harm you. You got to be haya. Haya here, it's not prohibited haya. It is which is allowed. Which is allowed haya here. Everybody is shy, right? Everybody feels shy. But when it comes to masail to know the religion, you should not feel. Shay, you should ask anything. You should ask anything, inshallah. Taib. So this hadith says, you cannot water. You cannot use the water. The next hadith says, the next hadith. Look at this, subhanallah. How Imam Ibn Hajar rahimahullah he brings the hadith. The next hadith says that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this particular hadith is narrated by Ibn Abbas radiyallahu an. Who is Ibn Abbas radiyallahu an? Prophets. Rasulullah sallam. No, he's a cousin. Is a cousin, is a cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam made dua for. What was the dua? Allahumma yufakkihu fi al-din wa alimhu ta'awil. Wa Allah give him the understanding of the religion and give him the understanding of the verses, the interpretation of the Quran. Rasulullah sallam made dua for him, and this Ibn Abbas radiyallahu an, and who is Maymuna radiyallahu anha? No. Aunt of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Who is he? Who is she? The aunt of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now sometimes Rasulullah sallam used to go and stay in the house of Maymuna radiyallahu anha, and sometimes Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhu used to stay along with him. And we have many other hadiths where we know that sometimes he used to pray night prayers. Who? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhu used to accompany Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And we know that hadith. He came and stood. On the left side, Rasulullah took his ears and put him on the right side. So this was in the house of Maymuna radiyallahu anha. So how, what here is? كان ما كان يكتسل بفضل ميمونة رضي الله عنها رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم 
utilize the water that was left out by Maimuna radiallahu anha. The previous hadith says you should not you're not supposed to use the water that is been utilized by women. Now here Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa utilized the water. He took ghusl, he took bath with the water that was left out by whom? Maimuna radiallahu anha. Is it contradicting? Contradicting, right? The first hadith says no. The second hadith says yes. Now I will I would like to mention the point. Uh, okay, let's continue this hadith and le- I'll tell you the point, inshallah. And not only that, from uh, from among the Sunan, Sunan means what are the Sunan? How many Sunan we have? The many Sunan. What are the famous Sunan that we have Be- beside uh, uh, Bukhari and Muslim? Yes, yes. Suma- Sunan Abu Dawood, Ibn Majah. Nasai, Tirmidhi. Tirmidhi is not called Sunan, but it is called uh, called as uh, Jamia. Why? What is the difference between Sunan and Jamia? Ah, uh, yeah. Collection of what hadith? No, no, no. Sunan are those ahadith which consist of halal and haram. Halal and haram. Sunan, Abu Dawood, Ibn Majah. And Nasai, these ahadiths consist of haram and halal. It talks about only ahkam rulings. Sahil Bukhari consists of jami. What are those? It talks about ilm, it talks about aqidah, it talks about yomul qiyamah, it talks about many other things. Similarly, Tirmidhi is jami. Jami Tirmidhi, it is not jami Tirmidhi. Taib? So, what is the difference? It consists of many ahadiths besides the ahkam. That's why it is called as al jami. Al Jamia. Is it clear now? The difference between Sunan and uh, Jamia. Is it clear now, inshallah? So, so when we when we're talking about the hadith, you will be able to understand not only the uh, the fawaid of the hadith, you will be able to understand some of the mustalah, the rulings of what is Sunan, what is Jamia, what is Manju Majhul, what is Mursal. Inshallah, we'll be taking all this and you keep hearing, inshallah, it will become you know uh, memorized, you will you will be able to memorize everything, inshallah. We'll continue, we will be able to repeat this. Uh, we'll, I'll be repeating these things, inshallah. You'll be able to learn. Is it clear? Okay. Co- going to the hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, another hadith which is supporting hadith that he used to take baths from the water that has been left out by his wives. By his wives. And one of the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah. I was in the state of Janaba and I've taken bath from this water. I've taken bath from this water. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Inna al ma'a la yajnub Inna al ma'a la yajnub The water does not uh, the water does not become sexually impure. Does water become sexually impure? No. Previous hadith says Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Naha Naha What is the meaning of Naha in Arabic? Prohibited. Yes. Prohibited or not? What is the meaning of naha, yanha? Prohibited, right? So how are we going to understand, is it an absolute prohibition or is it just a prohibition? How are we going to understand? Uh, Jameel, very good, mashallah, barakallah. We need to see other hadith. Let me give an example. So when you study about, when you study usul al-fiqh, the signs of the hadith, inshallah, we'll finish in next uh, 10 minutes. There are many others to cover, inshallah, we can, we can have questions and answers, inshallah. Okay, Taib. Uh, I wanted to finish uh, two more, two three more hadiths, but uh, it takes time. So slowly, inshallah, uh, we can go through because al ilmu bi tadarruj. The knowledge is by stages. We can't go, you know, uh, we can't haste uh, or we can't, uh, you know, without understanding the previous things, we can't go uh, to the other other hadiths. We need to understand the more fawaid of this hadith, inshallah. Taib. Uh, what I am saying. Usul al-fiqh, when you study Usul al-fiqh, you will come to know the meanings of what is mustahab, what is makru, what is uh, halal, what is haram, what is wajib, what is fard, and what is absolute nahi, naha. For example, here in the previous hadith, Raha, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, naha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi Rasulullah sallam prohibited it. So how are we going to understand it? If it is an absolute prohibition, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not have used the water which is left out by Maimuna radiallahu anha. 
he will not use utilize the water which was left out by uh, by his wives isn't it so what we understand let me give an example allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran wa idha halaltum fasta'adu wa idha halaltum fasta'adu what is the meaning of it when you are in a state of ihram you're not allowed to hunt you're not allowed to hunt when you stay in the haram when you go to makkah for umrah or hajj you are in the state of haram two white clothes that you wear you're not allowed to hunt allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa idha halaltum fasta'adu once you are free from ihram then hunt here the word is amr is obli- it's absolute amr order from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so how are we going to understand this particular word so you remove ihram and you go for hunting huh i'm asking you how are you going to understand this that's what we need to we need to understand when allah say when, when allah prohibited something is it an absolute prohibition when the words are utilized in the hadith and quran is an absolute prohibition or not whether it is makhru or whether it is highly recommended we need to understand this with when you study usul al fiqh and when you study as rightly Uh, the brother what's the name barakallahu feekum has he rightly mentioned barakallahu feek ya akhi rightly he mentioned we need to say we need to see other supportive ahadith supportive ahadith that shows that it is not an absolute prohibition laysa hadha nahi at tahrimi it is not an absolute prohibition absolute prohibition so it is allowed it is allowed to use the water that has been left out by uh by the wife or by the husbands and there's another riwaya of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam which is mentioned that uh, it, it is mentioned in sahih muslim uh, i think it's sahih muslim uh, the riwaya mentions that you know during the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the women used to make wudu from the same pot and the men also used to make wudu from the same pot if it was an absolute prohibition it's not allowed for us to use but it is not an absolute prohibition laysa hadha nahi anha tahrimi it is not an absolute prohibition but what is considered is makru is always good but utilizing it you will not be sinful insha allah uh, we will stop here or we will continue with the next hadis or we will have uh, questions and if there are any questions we can take if you upon, upon you insha allah i am here if you want me to teach for another 4 to 5 hours i have no problem i can continue 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 but it's upon you inshallah i have no problem i can teach keep on teaching no problem we'll stop here inshallah we'll uh, take the other hadith in the next class if there are any questions you can write down in a slip and if there are any questions in, at the uh, sister side inshallah we can take it answer inshallah barakallahu feekum wa hada wallahu alam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ So every class will be around uh, for about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. And more than that, you know what happens? Human tendency, they sleep. 30 minutes, 35 minutes, they go into sleep, even if the class is interesting. So human mind is like that. So what we have to do is, uh, we need to adjust ourselves and we need to get into this, inshallah. We study in Mecca, when we are studying in the class. And you must have seen many, you must have asked, you should ask many Madanis and other scholars. we study for several hours not for one class is around 1 one hour, one hour 50 minutes and we used to have two three classes from morning 8 to till 1:30 like that 2 o'clock after that we to, we used to go back home we used to come back again after asr we need to have some research to be done to submit the projects in the uh, to the uh, to, to the ulama that they have given and we will have other classes in the evening at halaka till night so it's like you know on going process so the human being will get used to it a person who is memorizing quran in the beginning he is able to memorize quran one verse two verses three verses half page slowly slowly he is able to memorize two pages then he goes on to memorize three he goes on to memorize four he goes on to memorize five six seven isn't it that's how it is the human mind will get equipped will get equipped it will get it accept so if you accept negative you will become negative if you accept positive you will become positive so be always positive inshallah any questions inshallah barakallahu feekum
uh, it was left out the hadith does not mention about janaba it was used by maimuna radiyallahu anha it is used it is used by maimuna radiyallahu anha but supporting hadith talks about that the the water left out by his wives wives of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they were in the state of janaba they were in the state of janaba and that water was utilized by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam for purification so what we understand from all these things is that it is allowed absolutely no problem a uh, problem whatsoever No, is it very clear? <laughs> Madi Rasulullah says it is najis. Madi is najis. What is Madi? That we will be studying in the coming lessons, inshallah. Madi is that fluid which uh, comes out from the private part of a human being uh, that is pre. ejaculation that is because of sexual that's pre sexual ejaculation that is madi that is madi so uh, that particular thing is najis it is najis impure so, uh, for example ali radiyallahu an he had wa huwa rajulun madda wa huwa rajulun madda he was of more of madi he had more madi and he was feeling shy to ask rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he sent another sahabi to ask uh, ask rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam about madi so rasul told it is najis and if the madi comes out he has to make wudu no ghusl has to make ghusl and how to make ghusl if the madi comes out you need to wash a private part as well you need to private wash the private part and if the madi touches the cloth or anywhere you need to wash that particular part as well then you have to make wudu just making wudu will not be sufficient because if there is najis on your dress as it we mentioned in the previous lessons if there is najis on the dress on the body or on the dress okay sala will not be accepted the sala will not be accepted so there, therefore you have to clean your clothes clean your body wherever this najasa and clean the place where you offer the prayer you can't pray at the place where there is najasa where is the impure sala will not be accepted so we need to see where you pray on which cloth you are playing praying or is there any najasa on your body as i told you najasa is should be very clear you know for example cow dung najasa on your dress on your skin can you pray you can pray it is not najas cow dung is not najas cow urine is not najas the urine of the camel is not najis the urine of the uh, those animals that we eat is not najis if it falls on your dress you go to the masjid you can pray you don't have to wash that and what is najis human being urine defecation or the dog or the pig or any other animals that we don't eat or don't eat is it clear now this is the qaida now you should understand the difference between the najis of the animal and which is not najis of the animal inshallah we will be coming to those uh, next hadith talks about ida walag al kalb if the dog drinks the water from the utensil that's the hadith inshallah we'll be dealing that uh, in detail in the next class inshallah now is it clear for you what is najis and what is not najis yes yeah uh, the garbage yeah, yeah it's najis it is najis you need to Uh, wash you need to wash because that water con- contains uh, the f- human feces that water contains human feces but it does not break the wudu you should keep this in the mind for example you are in the state of wudu you are going to the masjid and there was somebody who defecated on the road human being this happens in the villages and other countries you must have seen it so you stamped on it you stamped on the on the feces of a human being and that feces touch your body or your cloth or your feet so the, does that invalidate the wudu no it does not it does not invalidate the wudu but what is upon you is to clean that part then you can pray what invalidates the wudu urination anything that wa ma yakhruju min as-sabilain anything that comes out from the sabilain sabilain means two private parts both front and back anything reeh this uh, what is it 
the gas or urine or anything inshallah that comes out that breaks the wudu Other, otherwise it does not break the wudu so the, inshallah these things you know we are going to come with when it comes to next chapter we have the uh, babul aniya the book of utensils in this chapter we are going to study about um, which are the utensils can be used can we use the utensils of kuffar even if they ut- utilize that uh, utensil for uh, no alcohol or pork or anything, can we use that or not or can we, what are the utensils that has prohibited and how are we going to purify those utensils that's chapter if you have this inshallah we are going to discuss in detail about this inshallah okay so is it clear now exactly it's to be always in the safer side clean yourself because obviously the garbage that on the road or comes from the drainage uh, uh, from the drainage obviously it contains impure impurity so you need to go wash yourself inshallah yeah money is not najis money the sperm semen is not najis yeah yeah uh, inshallah we'll come to those will come to those inshallah when the chapter of wudu and ghusl will come to know so when the when ejaculate you have to take ghusl you have to take ghusl inshallah so you need to take ghusl and there are many rulings for that inshallah will be discussing in this you attend on every sunday inshallah all the matters will be clear for you every single matter will be clear for you inshallah stored water i uh, just now we explained about the stored water uh, what is the specific point you can you can we can make ghusl that's what we were discussing uh, were you there in the beginning of the class were you there in the beginning of the class yeah you utilize you can utilize it yes yes it's a stagnant water which is in the pot which is not uh, so when it comes to the hadith of maimuna radiyallahu anha that particular thing is not sure about janaba but the hadith which is supporting there is about the, his wives were in the state of janaba and rasul usam used to utilize that water which was used by his wife when they were state in state of impurity when the state of impurity okay here one more point which i want to tell you is in al ma'ala yujnib la yajnub what is meaning of it the the water will not become sexually impure isn't it i want to ask a question if a person is sexually impure can you touch him talk to him yeah, yeah, yeah. why is impure right answer <laughs> you touch him transfers okay tell me is impure right is in state of impure but can you talk to him can you touch him can you travel with him or not i'm asking you ha he is pure by spiritual is impure now he is hadith kabi akbar <laughs> let me tell you abu huraira radiyallahu an he came to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was in the state of janaba when he was in the state of janaba and rasulullah was sitting there and he didn't go and sat along with rasulullah he was standing he was standing away rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam what is he doing why then why are you not coming and sitting with me ya rasulullah your body is tahir you are pure and i don't want to pollute your body because i am in the state of janaba by touching you rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said innal muslim la yanjus the muslim is never impure the muslim is never impure so if he touches the water it does not become impure is it clear now so what is here in the beginning i mentioned that people don't like i give give an example you spit on the into the water bucket now for example you come here i'm going to spit into the water my spit is najis or pure pure will you make wudu from it you will make wudu well you, you dislike maybe you some others <laughs> be frank with me <laughs> you will not make wudu from it it's a oh, he spat into that i can't i can't make wudu from it that is something which is a dislike maslih al am that's what i mention is it clear now It's something which is dislike from the ada from etiquette is inshallah then i am going to spit and you're going to make wudu from it right <laughs> we'll go to the questions uh, is it clear now barakallah
uh, two opinions of 500 liters of water, which is the opinion we should follow? Okay, uh, the more authentic uh, about the cool Latin that we mentioned here is, it's the water which is above 500 liters, 500, 500 liters, around 560 liters, inshallah. That's the cool Latin. Going on to the next question, uh, Sheikh, the Hadith 5 talks about adab, to not perform ghusl, etc. in stagnant water while in the state of Janaba. But the stagnant water can be used for purification even though if someone had urinated or something in stagnant water. Please tell me if this is what is understood from the hadith. Absolutely. Uh, see, what is the, what the hadith talks about you are not supposed to urinate or defecate into the stagnant water. Now, a person urinated and uh, defecated in a stagnant water and you are not aware of it. You are not aware of it. Time, inshallah. Two minutes. You're going to start now? Okay, I'll ask, answer this question after the Adhan, inshallah. That will be last question and we will end up the session.